Our world is currently being gripped by a paralyzing pandemic. It causes anxiety, depression, and an overwhelming sense of hopelessness. And we're not talking about it nearly enough. It's time that we talked about arithmophobia. <laughs> arithmophobia, the morbid fear of numbers. <laughs> there has arguably never been a time where this devastating disease has been more widespread, and we need to talk about it. Now, I don't know many of you very well, but this feels like a safe space, and uh, I'm hoping that today I can open up to you about some of the numbers that strike fear into my heart each and every day. 2.5. 2.5 billion dollars a day is what Oxfam estimates that the wealth of the world's billionaires grew per day from 2017 to 2018. If we contrast this with the fact that about half of the world's population lives on an annual, or sorry, a daily income of $5.50, well below the poverty line, it's clear that wealth inequality is growing at an alarming rate. 286, terrified of this number also, small but mighty. 286 billion tons is what NASA estimates from 1993 to 2016 was the annual loss of glacial ice in Greenland on their, on their glaciers. So our climate is changing at a rapid rate and we're all starting to feel the effects. 5,000 terrifies me. Facebook owns over 5,000 data points on each of its billion plus users. From our age and basic demographic information through to analyzing our information in order to infer our political uh, leanings and our purchasing habits. This is leading to a rise in surveillance capitalism where our data is being commodified at an alarming rate and potentially being used against us. Our privacy is eroding absolutely rapidly. 58,164,320. Also scared of this number. This is what PwC estimates will be the job loss due to artificial intelligence and automation in the US alone by the year 2030. Arithmophobia is real, and it's time that we talked about it. Luckily, I believe that there is a hero waiting in the wings to help us tackle this crushing and devastating disease. A maven of mathematics, a sage of statistics, Someone who gets out of bed every day with the mission to serve and protect the public. Yes, everyone, of course, I am talking about <laughs> accountants. Some heroes wear capes, others carry calculators. <laughs> Hear me out. So since the modern incarnation of accounting was invented in the 15th century by Luca Pazzioli in Italy, we've referred to accounting as the language of business. It helps us keep score. It tells us whether, a, whether a company's making profit, what it owns, what it owes. It's the, the language that we use to measure business success. We're going to talk about a little bit more about this in a moment, but accounting actually has also uh, important language implications on your love life. So... According to this German-English dictionary produced by The Lonely Planet, um, if you're involved in a uh, romantic pursuit uh, by someone that maybe you're not interested in, don't worry, accounting can help. You're traveling, someone's expressing uh, that they're enamored with you, and you want to kind of let them down gently, simply utter the phrase, before this goes any further, I must be upfront. I'm an accountant. Accounting is the language of heartbreak. <laughs> I digress. So for the past 10 years, I've been a chartered professional accountant or CPA. And for the last four years, I've had the opportunity to teach the next generation of uh, CPAs or accountants at Acadia University. I fundamentally believe that accounting has the power to change lives. We can use it to measure the impacts we're having on the world around us, to effectively measure risk and opportunity, uh, and to tell a story about uh, how the organization that we're uh, working at is doing. For better or worse, 
the rules and the language we use around accounting fundamentally shape our society. With that said, I'm deeply concerned that if accounting is the language of business, we're not telling the whole story. Given the complex challenges that we face uh, as a society, I see a deep divide between the language that we're using uh, to uh, illustrate business success and the complex challenges that we face, such as climate change or wealth inequality. So today I'd like to break down some of that language barrier uh, and propose uh, some steps that we can take uh, to immerse ourselves in a new language. So first exhibit, revenue minus expenses equals profit. This is probably the first thing you learn when you walk into an accounting class. Uh, it's the basis of the income statement. What we earn less what we burn is what's left over, and we want to maximize that bottom line, that profit line item. You might call it net income, and our objective is to maximize shareholder wealth through generating profit. This is drilled into our heads from day one if we're going through a modern business education. Okay. Exhibit number two. The fundamental accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. If you were going to get one accounting tattoo, this is the one. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. <laughs> I haven't been able to convince any of my students to take me up on, uh, on that yet, but uh, who knows. So this is important. It tells us uh, that what we own as an organization is equal to uh, what we owe and what we get to keep. What isn't being told in this conversation or in this uh, language or equation is that all the entity really cares about is itself. It's focused on a single entity, and it doesn't much care for the positive or negative externalities it's, it's causing in the community or the globe around it. So accounting can be selfish. And the third relic I'd like to point out, uh, created in 1937 to the ultimate measure of an economy or country's success that we still rely on today, GDP or gross domestic product. The ultimate measure of success of an economy continues to be growth. So we add up our consumer spending, our government spending, our investment, uh, and then our net exports, and that's going to tell us whether our country is succeeding or not. We're addicted to an e economic growth and have a tough time breaking out of the past. I can think of a few other things that have changed since 1937. Uh, maybe it's time we updated our language uh, a little bit uh, to reflect that. Okay. So language is important. And the language that we're currently using is leading to a race to the bottom line, a single entity focus that's not concerned about the externalities that it's creating, uh, and an addiction to growth. All of these combined are creating uh, a significant rise in wealth and income inequality, uh, tremendous impacts on our planet, and giving up our privacy data at an alarming rate and having it used against us. So today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how we can create a new language immersion program that's taking a more holistic view of accounting from day one in our curriculum. And I think the Maple League of Institutions is perfectly positioned to do that given our natural inclination to be interdisciplinary system thinkers. Okay. So this is Acadia University. Uh, a few years ago I studied there, um, studied accounting, and it was where I was introduced to concepts such as business, uh, profit, but also uh, complex systems, sustainability, and externalities. I had a few silo-smashing professors that really changed my conception of what a business should be, far beyond a purveyor of wealth generation for shareholders. Uh, it's also an actor in a complex system, and its actions have a tremendous impact on the ecosystem around it. Unfortunately, those conversations were limited to uh, several isolated classes, rarely touched on accounting or finance-related courses, and in the 20 years uh, uh, approximately since I've graduated, it came up in the conversation far too uh, little uh, throughout my career. Okay. So I believe it's incumbent upon us to create a new immersion uh, into a, a bigger language, and I have a few turbo-tangible ideas that I think we can uh, tackle within the next year that I'd like to share with you and hopefully chat with about you uh, later in the week or the weekend rather. So first, starting small. So I'm a complex systems scholar and an accountant. What a combo, I'm a hit at parties. Um, so I spend a lot of time thinking about the parts of a system, uh, how they interact with other parts, and how that impacts the system uh, as a whole. So a core tenet of that, uh, a central pillar, if you will, is that of path dependence. 
Um, other scholars uh, would refer to it something similar, maybe uh, historical institutionalism. Both are incredibly pretentious ways of saying that uh, you rarely get a second chance to make a first impression, um, and it's tough to teach an old dog new tricks. So um, when it comes to accounting, when the first thing we hear is that uh, revenue minus expenses equal profit, and we've got to maximize shareholder wealth, gives us a limiting view of what accounting could and uh, arguably should be. So I would argue that from day one, when we introduce accounting, it's got to be in a holistic manner, uh, where we're introducing uh, triple bottom line accounting, where people, uh, the planet, and profit are all presented as equally important and uh, an important uh, equation to balance um, uh, when it comes to uh, business and broader society. So seeing this emerge through trends towards uh, ESG reporting um, in Europe and We'll inevitably see that happening here. We've got to equip our students with, uh, with a new language uh, to tackle that. So I would challenge any of my colleagues, particularly those who teach in accounting or finance, that to, to sprinkle in a little bit of triple bottom line thinking in the first class early on and throughout their accounting uh, curriculum before they dive into the BS, the balance sheet. Okay, huh? uh. second, thank you, thank you for uh, the uh, thank you for that. So second, thinking a little bit bigger, um, last year uh, we had a tremendous, uh, tremendous pilot of a course throughout the Maple League where we brought together professors from different disciplines and they looked at the concept of time from the perspectives of uh, religion, uh, biology, music, and uh, physics. So I would love to take this uh, concept, interdisciplinary learning, and create a course that looked at measuring impact. We could feature uh, folks from sociology, from business, from religion, uh, community development, dive into things like the UN Sustainable Development Goals and develop a deep understanding of them, look at things like social return on investment. Um, you may have noted that I left physics deliberately uh, out of this conversation because I thought sort of physics and impact, if there's one number that scares me, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. <laughs> could be fun, could be fun, okay? I think, uh, I think uh, within this, uh, there's a huge opportunity to make tangible steps towards uh, some of our, our uh, recommended actions under the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And, um, and um, that could take the form of, of incorporating new ways of knowing into our curriculum. Um, we've got to take tangible action here. We're all treaty people, and we're not doing nearly uh, enough. We've got to have uh, uh, that new knowledge uh, and new ways of knowing, um, or alternate ways of knowing, in deeply embedded into our curriculum. Okay. So third... What if we took a holistic approach to how we did like our annual reporting and some of our strategic planning as a, uh, as a university? So um, we could steal a page from the book of uh, Fogo Island in Newfoundland, which uses an economic nutrition label, a uh, relatively simple to understand way of uh, taking something we're familiar with and applying it to uh, financial decision making and reporting. Um, gives us a really clear picture of where the inputs to our institutions are coming from uh, and where the profits are being redeployed. So I think this would be particularly uh, interesting if we were to take it and apply it to procurement at universities and particularly that of uh, food services. Our current model of uh, uh, trying to achieve a low cost um, a food system in partnership with a, with a major corporation uh, results in uh, importing a ton of food and exporting a ton of profit beyond our regions. If we use this as a model for how we make uh, food procurement decisions on our universities, for example, um, we would be able to, uh, or would likely gravitate towards working more closely with local producers to uh, have uh, an, an externality effect of bolstering our local food system um, and resilience within our local agriculture community and getting tastier things to eat. I would look amazing uh, when I go to government the next time to ask for funding if I'm able to demonstrate tangibly that I've made a fundamental impact on food system resilience uh, in the community that's around us. So, and we're small enough at uh, the Maple League of Institutions that we could uh, uh, make a serious dent in this. Okay. My final recommendation is that we should develop a strategic partnership with the Prince of Wales uh, Accounting for Sustainability Initiative, or A4S. This is relatively new, and it's aiming to change fundamentally the way that we uh, uh, develop our finance and accounting professionals in the world um, from day one, uh, teaching them to incorporate uh, themes of social and uh, environmental uh, risk management um, 
and accounting into uh, how we present financial information. So as a small school, it's interdisciplinary in nature. This could be a key differentiator at an early stage in a project that I think is going to change the accounting world. And so rather than um, using our limited resources to uh, compete with uh, institutions that are trying to pop people onto Bay Street and Wall Street, um, we think a little bit different, leverage our strength as systems thinkers um, to produce more holistic leaders uh, that, that understand kind of the big picture. Just a couple of ideas. Um, I think that uh, we're, we're really well positioned as like a system uh, of learners to make some fundamental changes in terms of uh, the language that we use. Uh, and if we were uh, able to bring a more holistic view to how we do accounting, um, I don't think those numbers would continue to be so scary. Thank you so much.